Sound Design. So what do the EQ switches on the back of a VRX 932 really do? I am guilty of spreading rumors about this, so today I would like to try and clear anything up that I've said in the past that may be misleading to people. Okay, so VRX 932, you've got these switches and they have these various positions. And what you can choose with those positions is these EQ settings. Um, so minus three, zero, plus three. First thing I want to draw your attention to, if you've never looked at this graph before in the user's manual, is that um, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, zero dB means flat. So this should all be flat along here. This should be flat along here, right? But it's not. Um, minus three dB still has a little bit of an offset. And just good to be aware of that, but pretty normal for... Uh, elements like this that want to be arrayed together and uh, work together to play farther. Why did they do this? So the idea here is that if you are arraying these together and they're playing at different distances, then you may need or you may want this EQ boost in the high end to overcome some of this distance um, and air loss, right? And so you've got plus three, zero, minus three. Here's the problem. Here's the rumor that I helped spread. My friend said, hey, I never use these switches on the back of the VRX because they cause phase shift and that phase shift then will create problems in the crossover region. Well, if we take a look at the chart for Bob McCarthy's summation zones in his book, we see that the area where we have the biggest opportunity for summation and cancellation is the combing zone. And that is the area where we have matched levels. Right. So that is the crossover region. So he's saying to me, hey, where these guys arrive together. Right. At the same level in between these boxes, the crossover region, you're going to have problems because of the phase shift. And I said, got it. I won't use those anymore. And I told some other people that as well. But I was at a local AV company recently here in Minneapolis, AV for you, and I was measuring some of their VRX. And I had the opportunity to uh, measure them and play with their switches. And so that's what we can take a look at now and see what's really going on. So I've got here the um, example where you have the switches set to minus 3 dB and 0 dB in blue. And so I think one of the first things we noticed is that it's not exactly 3 dB where we expect it to be. So if I turn this guy up 3 dB, one, two, three. They're not on top of each other here. So where is it plus 3 dB? Well, right here at about 1.6, 1.7 kilohertz. And if I turn it up one more dB at, you know, around 6, 7, 8 kilohertz is where we're seeing plus 4 dB. The next thing I noticed is that the phase shift is so small, <laughs> which if I knew more about filters, I would have known already because even just looking at this graph, um, you can look at the Q change and know what the phase shift is going to be just from the properties of minimum phase. Um, but I don't know anything about that. So I assumed it was going to be like 90, 100, 180 degrees. And that's why uh, we should be afraid of it. And it causes these problems. But if we look here, um, it's like 10, 20, 30. It only gets up to 60 degrees here in the very high end around 16, 18K. So I still wanted to answer the question though, what is the sum? What will be the result? Uh, we are looking at this position here. I wanna know what's going to be the result if I measure right here at the crossover in between these two boxes. So I did the math and let's look at the target first. So what I'm calling the target would be an example of perfect summation if um, both of these red and blue measurements were perfectly phase aligned at every frequency, then this black trace is what we would get. Let's talk about this quickly. So if I turn this down 60B, we see we have perfect summation in the low end where we are both phase aligned and matched in magnitude. Why are we not getting the same result here in the high end? So let's go back to Bob McCarthy's summation zones and take a look at what's happening here. So 
we see that we don't always have plus 60b unless we are perfectly matched in magnitude. So what's going on with the magnitude relationship? Well, we were looking at this earlier and we saw that they're actually 4db apart. So what is the maximum summation we can get if we have two signals that are 4db apart? Looking back over here, I just count from left to right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I see here that the um, maximum summation we can get is about 4 dB um, if we're perfectly phase aligned. And now this makes more sense if I offset the target by 4 dB, it lands on top here. And so now we see, okay, this is why we have 6 dB summation in the, high, in the low end, but only 4 in the high end. Okay. So I'm understanding that a little bit better. That's my target. So what's my result? What is the sum that I get when I have this offset here? And I open this up and it's very underwhelming because <laughs> it looks almost perfect. But I could have predicted this just by looking at the phase wheel. So if we're going to say that we have a maximum of 60 degrees of phase offset between red and blue, and we take a look at this phase wheel from Merlin Van Veen's site here, we can see that once we get to about 60 degrees, we are still in the coupling zone. We are still going to get some amount of summation, not 6 dB of summation, not the total summation that we would get if we were perfectly phase aligned here, but still uh, only about 1 dB off. Um, and now if we zoom in up here, let's actually, let's zoom into this area. Okay, so you can see that we're only about 60 degrees apart here in the high end, and we're only about 1 dB off from the target here. Uh, and so this kind of clues us in to see that although we're not perfectly level matched in the high end, um, we're very close, and so we should expect not to see perfect summation, but very close to it. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that clears up any rumors you may have heard about this problem. It definitely does for me. I now know that I can use those EQ changes that are available to me on the back of the box if I want to, and I don't have to be afraid of crazy summation uh, cancellation things happening at the crossover region. So I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know any questions that come up for you about this or any suggestions that you have for me. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.